Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. Our circumnavigation of New Zealand had gotten off to a shaky start with the spinnaker ripping the deck clean off the hull. It's ripped up! The whole bow has come up! That was insane. We had managed to glue it down temporarily, but we still needed the fiberglass inside the forepeak, which we were procrastinating on, considering how horrible that job was going to be. So we were going to continue sailing north, with the deck being secure enough for the time being. But little did we know, the deck was going to be the least of our worries. Something's burning! So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Parley Revival. From hurricane damaged, to broken bulkheads, and getting struck by lightning not once, but twice, to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We've already sailed 25,000 miles to get here, and nothing is going to stop us from circumnavigating the globe. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Here we go! We just went past a big floating, um, like a muscle farm boy, and like clockwork, fish on. It's a long one. The sun's glaring, I can't even see what it is. Watch out, watch out, it's a baby mako. It's gonna be tough, Jamie. There we go. Very nice. Hi, Sharky. There we go. one far shark. Baby shark. So as you know, the foot block here for the furler, for the jib, isn't in. But it's not too bad because there's no pressure that comes on this when the uh, sail is actually out. So we're just going to release it because we're on a starboard tack. So the jib's going to be out to the port side. But then when we furl it back up, we'll just pull it from the furling line here, right at the base of the furler. Oh. Dressed as a salmon? Because <laughs> <laughs> Jamie saw it jump, that's how he knows. <laughs> what? Oh. What smell like? Oh. Ow! Oh! 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 Hopefully it still lives. Right, we're coming into Whangarei. We've got a lot of shopping to do today. We need fiberglass supplies. Also, one of our followers owns Mitre 10 Mega here. And he's offered for us to come and fill up a trolley, basically. So uh, we're going to take him up on that. So we're coming right up the Whangarei channel here. We've got to get this bridge open for us and then we're going to be uh, berthed right in the basin. So let's get this bridge open. Whangarei is a two and a half hour drive north of Auckland and has a few marina options in the area. If you're coming here with a boat, there are two big marine stores here and also most services available for sailboats. This was our first time going right into the basin the beauty of which is that there is a huge grocery store just across the road called Pack and Save, and of course, the Mitre 10 Mega, which the owner had offered us $500 worth of free goods and cost price on anything else we wanted in the whole store. So we were stoked. Man, we haven't been here five minutes and someone's already come down, said they follow the channel and he's taken the bracket for our topping lift away to weld up. He says he'll have it back this afternoon. What a warm welcome to Whangarei. All right, here we are at Mitre 10 Mega. We're just gonna fill up the trolley, I think. As you know, we had some serious fiberglass repairs to do on the boat. So the timing of this offer from Ben couldn't have been any better. When you sail to more remote locations like we do, you always have to make the most of a good hardware store when you find one, which is exactly what we did here. There we go, that was over a thousand dollars. Stoked. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it, mate. Bye, Liz. Thank you so much. It's been so fun. It's been a great time. So it was time for Bob and Liz to do some exploring on land before flying back to the States. Bob and Liz were the previous owners of Parlay when it got hit by the hurricane in the British Virgin Islands in 2017. He got an insurance payout and the boat was deemed a constructive total loss. So he got one heck of a surprise when he saw us sailing around on his old boat on YouTube. We are now all great friends and I'm proud to continue his legacy on Parlay as we endeavour to not only circumnavigate New Zealand, but the whole planet. You know, what a wonderful time. 
that we've had here. Spend time and sail, especially to go to the Great Barrier and visit uh, Colin's parents. That's a little bit of paradise there in this world. Kind of like this boat, wherever it goes. There's a little bit of paradise wherever it lands, you know? So I'm gonna cherish these memories for a lifetime and look forward to the next time. Hey guys, so we're leaving the marina in Fungare now. It was a nice little break to sleep at the dock for the night. And we've actually picked up two new crew uh, for our circumnavigation, so let's meet them now. So excited, out on the water. Kia ora, how's it going? Are you excited for this? Yeah, super excited to be on the boat. Eh? It's my first time ever on a boat like this and I'm real excited to like just be on the open water and like sleep and you know, everything's real exciting. Morning guys! So we came around the corner to Ocean Beach. There's a whole bunch of people surfing. This is the ultimate. Anchoring right at the surf spot. Jumping off the back of the boat and catching waves. Like, it doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, this definitely swell. Did you think this was happening when you woke up this morning? <laughs> oh. Yep, I manifested it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ready to try out your wetsuit? New wetsuit, Seventh yeah. Wave by yeah, Sarah ready? and Christchurch. Yeah. How good is that? That's that service right there. Drops straight into the lineup. When I first bought Parlay straight after Hurricane Irma, the original plan was to set up a business doing surf charters in Costa Rica. The point of this was to be able to surf as much as possible while still sailing and living on the ocean. Well, after starting a YouTube channel and committing to sailing around the whole world, we don't get to surf as much as we would like. So it's moments like these that mean so much to me. We had an awesome session at Ocean Beach, and as we went to fire up the main engine, it didn't turn over at all. And what's worse, Jamie noticed smoke coming out of the engine room. Oh sh! Something's burning! Oh Jesus! A fire on a boat is absolutely no joke. This boat is made out of fiberglass with a wooden balsa core, so it would go up in flames in no time. Are you sure it wasn't turning over? Nah, nothing was happening. I could hear this and nothing was happening and then when I lifted it, that smoke, that smoke was coming out. Luckily there was no fire, but the engine would still not turn over, even when I tried to jump start it directly at the starter motor. But after a bit more troubleshooting, I realised it was the start relay which was fried, and must have been where the smoke was coming from as well. When I jump started the engine directly at the start relay, she fired up no problem. So luckily I had a spare one which I just swapped out. And away we went to look for our next surf spot while the swell was still hanging around. And what we found was Sandy Bay. While anchored at Sandy Bay, my Instagram account had just ticked over to 500,000 followers. So we decided to do something different to celebrate. We had been surfing with my friend Louis Anderson, who used to play rugby league for New Zealand back in the day. I also just heard that season two of Belaidic Sailing that I was on is on Netflix. So it's just been a crazy week. Thank you guys for following. Thanks for subscribing. He weighs a whopping 120 kilos, which is 264 pounds. So I thought it was a bright idea to get him to tackle me off our dive board. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You got some broken ribs. Sandy Bay. It's a sick spot, but um, Jamie's leaving for a week. He's gonna go um, race on a 60 meter super yacht. So the captain is my friend Berger. I worked with Berger like 15 years ago and we sort of still kept in touch. And they happened to be in Auckland and he wanted us to come race. But I'm gonna keep taking parlay around New Zealand and uh, Jamie's gonna go. You nervous? Not nervous, I'm pretty pumped. 60 meters, this boat actually has the Biggest sail in the world. Yeah. I mean, Louis gonna take him. He's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> he just smashed me off the back of the boat. In real time, we just reached 300,000 subscribers and half a million on Instagram. We couldn't keep doing this without you guys, so thanks for subscribing. All right. See you in a week. See ya.
It's um 11:30 a.m. And what are you drinking? I'm drinking a beer. <laughs> Seems wrong on parlay, but anyway, a <laughs> leak. It would be more wrong on parlay to waste, waste a beer. beer. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. First mate's gone. You ready to step up? Oh yeah, big time. The new first mate's just come. <laughs> Woo! So with Jamie gone. Ollie and Tori offered to fill the role as first mates. They had huge shoes to fill, so the first step was to learn about the fundamentals of sailing. Teaching someone how to sail who has never done it before can be quite challenging. It's difficult to know where to start sometimes, as there really is so much involved in making a boat go from A to B just using the wind. Then there are all the nautical terms, which make things even more difficult to understand. A sail is hoisted at the head with the halyard, Drop down with a downhaul, but gets tension at the clue with the outhaul. But sheeted in with another line called a sheet. With the wind hitting the luff and trailing off the leech, which shouldn't be mistaken for the tack or the foot of a sail, which is on the boom where you reef the main. Try explaining all of that to a newbie. So we're training Ollie and Tori up for our big sail down the west coast. Especially if Jamie's still racing on that super yacht. Um, it's just beneficial for everyone if we all know how to sail well. So these guys haven't sailed before so it's all a steep learning curve but they're picking it up super quick. Uh, this has been a dream of mine for yeah. so long. It's so good having Colin teach us. He knows so much. Yeah. No, it's so good. It's like it's so unexpected and like it feels like it's just what it's meant to be you know. Yeah I feel like I was always meant to be a sailor now. Yeah. Come on. I want to learn everything there is to know. That's cool. We've just had dolphins come to the bow. These two are just in cloud nine right now, and that's it's so nice to be able to do that for them. It's learning so much and all of these new experiences. And it makes me feel excited again for all of this, you know? Jamie kind of just is, him and I are just on autopilot. We don't even need to talk to each other. We can sail this boat without even talking. We just sort of know what each other is doing or is about to do, and we just get it done. We were having an incredible sail to our next anchorage up the coast of New Zealand when the new first mate was caught having smoko on the job. It's tiring being out in the ocean. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm a baby again. Okay, we've made it to Whangamumu. It's this beautiful little uh, inlet here. The bay is just completely flat. So we're going to raft up with Paula and Pickle. They came down to our... What? <laughs> It's so cute, Paula and Pickle. We're gonna raft up with them. We're uh, defrosting some brisket that we still have left over from our Texan barbecue that we did. Let's go team, what are they waiting for? Nice one, Paula. Jamie's replacement. Sorry, Jamie. I'm the first right, one now. Alright, let's go, guys. <laughs> Ready? We're going for some lobsters. You ready for this? I'm so ready. You're gonna commit? I'm gonna fully have to commit because they got big dinner, claws. Big prey's coming up. Woo! <laughs> it's cold! Woo! We had been given a bit of a bum stare with this particular cray spot, but it's always just good to be in the water. Pretty much everything when diving in New Zealand waters is different to the tropics that we've been in for the last six years. The water temperature, the fish, the kelp, and even the locals. All right, well, we found our shark bait. It's Pickle. <laughs> oh my gosh. With pickle. a bloody nose. All right, so Pickle has a, a nosebleed, nose like a massive nosebleed. So we've just we've got the trick. <laughs> oh Come on. Yeah, yeah, it will. <laughs> Half, mate. No, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. It's a super. It'll be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> above the water. Oh my god! It's gonna come out. It's not gonna work. Pickle, you can't go in the water with it. It's just to stop the bleeding. <laughs> it's gonna expand. I cannot. <laughs> come on, Katie. No chance. Come on. No. No, I can't. That makes me want to be sick. <laughs> no. No way. Go, break up. <laughs> really? No. It smells that bad? 
All right, so Katie and I just got dropped off on this remote, I guess, sort of beach. We're gonna go explore. Let's see what we find. The grass looks so green. I'm so excited to just do this barefoot. <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how stunning the New Zealand landscape is. It was only going to get better and better the more south we went as well. You hear all the cicadas right now? They're so loud. It's like almost ear piercing. We were trying to get to the northern end of New Zealand called Cape Rianga and do the three day sail south down the west coast to the top of the South Island. We had less than 100 miles to get to the tip of New Zealand. So we were well on track to round Cape Rianga when all of a sudden... I went to start the starboard engine. When I put it in gear, it's developed a knocking sound. Something's going clunk, 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 clunk inside the sail drive. So it doesn't do it when the engine is running and in neutral. So it's not on the engine or flywheel side. Um, it could be something to do with the propeller or the propeller end, or it could be something inside the sail drive itself. So I jumped under the boat and the propeller looks fine. When I spin the prop on its own, it um, I can't hear anything rubbing or hitting. But when we're sailing and I put the sail drive in gear, I can hear the, the knocking noise. So... Um, all we've done is eliminated the engine and anything external on the prop. But the next step would be to remove the whole cone clutch assembly for two reasons. One is to inspect the gears themselves, but the other is to go for a sail and let the propeller spin. If the noise remains with the whole clutch assembly not even in the sail drive, then we know that the issue is inside the leg of the sail drive or the propeller itself. So. Got to figure this out before we go down the west coast of New Zealand because we're going to want both fully functioning engines. I'll just fire up the engine now and see if you guys can hear it. Um, it's worse in reverse. So that's a neutral, no knocking noise. I'll flick it into reverse and we'll have a quick listen. It's so weird, you hear it way more when it's closed, but when you open it slightly, it kind of disappears. It's just reverberating there. It was so hard to tell where the noise was coming from, but I knew one thing, it was definitely a major issue. The frequency of the knocking noise had me thinking it was prop related. But when I was up close, it definitely sounded like it was inside the clutch assembly. What I have to do is take it all apart and take the clutch assembly out, do a sea trial while we're here. If the knocking has stopped, then it is the cone clutch. But then I'll put it back together, dock the boat, and then pull it out again. Not ideal, but it's better than going in and out of the marina on one engine twice. So, let's rip this thing apart. These are the SD50 sail drives, and I have had so many issues with them slipping and carrying on that I now feel like I know them inside and out. It only takes me about 10 minutes to get the whole clutch out now with the only time consuming part being disconnecting the pinion gear towards the flywheel. So we've got the whole clutch assembly out. We are gonna go for a sea trial, get that prop spinning. I'm guessing that's gonna be silent now that the clutch is out, so that we know it's the um, cone clutch assembly. Okay, we got port engine running and I'm doing five knots. Any noise back there, Joe? I don't hear a thing, no. So... That eliminates the propeller side because when I did this before, engine off, it was knocking. So, got to uh, take that cone clutch assembly apart. Okay, we're going to go to Opua now. Tori's gone with um, Pickle to find crayfish, see if they got anything. Paula's just holding it up now in the dinghy and it looks pretty big! It's just exhausting! <laughs> the viz isn't very good, but uh -huh. yeah, just get down right into the rocks there. So, Pex, why are we gonna toss him back in the water? Oh, he's just a bit mean to bloody kill him, actually. So, 
I think it is a female, so we'll just let him let him go back into the wild. Sink back Good down. Good job, guys. Woo! There you go. Woo! Yes. Yes. So last minute change of plans, having to leave because of the sail drive. Just reminds you how quick things change around here and how nimble you have to be and adaptive you have to be and ready to go at any given time. This sail drive stuff, it just reminds me how like lucky I am that Colin's an engineer and he could kind of figure everything out. It's really cool to actually just learn from him and see it all happen and to be able to make videos for you guys to educate you on how to fix it when these problems arise as well. So. That's something I wish that I had a little bit more of this handyman mentality. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next Sunday when we do an emergency haul out of Parlay.